All right. Happy to be here with Leah Cooper. Uh, we always have fun. We've been, I, this, this is like the third take and we're just laughing along the way. Um, so she is part of my group coaching program and is, uh, yeah, I just enjoy hanging out with her and she's been such a great contributor to the group as well. And what we're going to do in this interview, uh, I was going to say, because usually Leah is interviewing people these days, so you get to be on this side, Leah. So what, what I'm going to interview her about is what she's been learning along the way as she's been developing her authentic business. Um, she's got some great insights to share with you all. And so I think you'll be inspired by this. And also the purpose of this interview is to, <laughs> to provide a bit of public accountability for Leah's progress, so that's kind of what we're um, what we're doing. Uh, just so um, you're going to see Leah several times uh, in this series, and we'll kind of update. She'll update you along the way. So I'm excited for this, Leah. Welcome. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, George. Great to be here. And yeah, it's it's really lovely that you're doing this this year in the program. You know, getting yeah. These having these sessions of interviews and yeah, really public accountability. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, I think, I think it's having people see someone, you know, kind of working and learning and making progress along the way just shows others that wait, maybe I can do it too, or uh, look what they're doing. And let me, let me, you know, integrate that inspiration into my own work. So yeah. uh, first let's start off with how are you introducing your work these days? However, yeah. however it comes out today is just great. Yeah, great question. Yeah, so I am a yoga teacher and a Whole Foods cook. I do workshops for Whole Foods cooking, um, mainly seasonal, plant-based, that type of stuff. And I'm just looking at, at the moment, expanding my business into other offerings, things like one-day retreats, um, workshop, more different types of workshops, and yeah, this year I'm, I'm, might be the year of the webinar. I don't know. I kind of feel called to just, I was watching one of your videos the other day about just, just, you know, plan it, you know, advertise it. And then if people sign up, run it, if people don't sign up, well then, okay, next one, you know, just keep mm -hmm. playing with some ideas. So yeah. uh, I think this is my year of content experimentation, which it has been all the time anyway, but I think more focused content experimentation, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. On different on things that I feel awesome. called to share about. Yeah. And those watching or listening, you can look at the notes below the video for the links to Leia's content. So uh, right now you can find her on YouTube and Facebook. And so I'll have the links below so you can check. So as you're thinking about, I'm just curious if you have any uh, t thoughts about the, the workshops and the retreats, like what kinds of topics are exciting for you these days? Mm, yeah, so it's more just about providing opportunities for people to experiment with themselves and with things that might be of interest. So, so with the workshops, it's mainly the workshops I'm doing at the moment, the cooking workshops, um, but expanding that into the one day retreat, you know, getting other practitioners in as well. So I contacted a lady recently who does pottery and so you know had this idea I spoke to her at this market where I met her and you know, like we could do like this blindfold pottery session or something you know like do some yoga and meditation and then take that further and, and do this like blindfold pottery idea you heard it wow. here first um yeah. it may already exist but um wow. yeah just just strange things you know just just mm -hmm. getting people out of their comfort zone um yeah and I'm also nice. interested in exploring some sort of different types of movement as well yeah. Um, but that's probably with a slightly different audience to the one that I'm currently working mm -hmm. with. So yeah, just ex it's a whole experimentation process. I see. Ahead. I love it. Yeah, really cool. And for those who don't know where you are, tell us where you are in the world. And also, yeah, go ahead. Let's start with there. Yeah, so I'm in South Australia. I'm in the Barossa Valley, uh, which is about an hour north of the main city of Adelaide. So it's a fairly rural area. It's, it's actually well known for its wine production, great growing region. Mm -hmm. Um, nice, but nice. I don't drink. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, you drink, you, you drink, just not wine, I guess. Yeah, just not wine. Yeah, <laughs> um, so. What, uh, so, and when, since a lot of people watching this aren't local to you, uh, mm. if and when you start doing uh, workshops online or webinars, what might some of the topics be? Yeah, so um, things like, uh, I've got a list somewhere, uh, things like gut health. Um, mm. So I guess natural a natural approach to gut health um, and also things like women's health, like menstrual 
issues, yeah. mm-hmm. things like that. And I guess this is more coming from a macrobiotic perspective as well. So that's one of my passions. Yeah. yeah. So so a lot of these things will probably be macrobiotic focused as well. So yeah. Um, and for those who don't know philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Those who don't know what micro- macrobiotic means, or just review for us what what you yeah. how you define that. Yeah. Gosh. So well, macrobiotics it essentially means big life, macro big. Ah. Big life. Okay. Um, but it's it's a lot of people would have heard of the macrobiotic diet. Um, mm-hmm. It was quite popular, sort of the 70s, 80s. I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it is. So <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, originally, you know, if the hardcore macrobiotics, it was like brown rice and miso soup. Um, but it actually is a lot more than that. And, and it's it's seen as a healing diet, but it's also, there's a real philosophy behind it as well. There's a whole philosophy about how, um, I guess, how the universe came into existence and how human evolution has taken place as a result of the energy. It's all about ki and yin and yang um, and incorporates the five elements. Or here, here, here in the US, we call it chi. Chi, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and the five elements as well in traditional Chinese medicine. Right. And also the meridian body, you know, all those, you know, traditional healing methods that have been around for centuries mm. and, yeah, incorporates all that. So it's really, it's basically just a modern approach to, you know, the traditional way of living, you know, even back when we were, you know, hunter gatherers or whatever. So it's like eating in the seasons, eating what's grown mm. in your area, um, avoiding things that are toxic, you know, and just, mm. and yeah. Sounds yeah. very reasonable and yeah, hmm. good. Good plan. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. It's pretty a logical. Way I feel to, like you should do life. since this is a public accountability type of session. Uh, yeah. I would encourage you to do a webinar on. And I just want to say hi to Mr. Turtle, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Turtle is yeah. now now coming over to say, "Oh, okay, over there. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Oh, Turtle is very very active more. right now." And yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's part of that's part of Mr. Turtle's macrobiotic lifestyle. Now, um, so uh, I feel like a webinar on Leah's perspective about macrobiotic mm-hmm. lifestyle and diet would be fascinating. I would personally yeah. be interested, and um, you know, you can bring in kind of uh, the holistic view of you know, you, like you said, how the universe came to be or how humanity evolved and the five elements. I mean, I think this is all fascinating stuff, and and, and people yeah. will probably walk away from that being more aware of mm. even if they don't go hardcore into microbiotics yeah, no. they're just more aware of their choices going forward you know so anyway yeah. that's yeah thank you i will yeah i I, I think that's a that's a fascinating thing um yeah because i mean these days of course paleo is more popular but essentially mm. what what macrobiotic is kind of like more holistic view of paleo i mean from what i can hear i don't know paleo either but yeah. um anyway paleo so. is very animal based it's based oh on, okay i see know, lots of animal protein oh i see see i don't know well. i don't know any of the stuff yeah. but but um it but yeah avoids all carbohydrates or most carbohydrates oh okay okay yeah so i i completely carbohydrate focused <laughs> oh foods, interesting interesting actually okay from a whole foods perspective. Food perspective so it would be interesting in that webinar perhaps mm. to compare yeah. these different viewpoints um, so maybe that's a different webinar. Maybe there's a webinar yeah. on macrobiotics, but maybe maybe there's a webinar on Leah's perspective on these mm. popular, you know, diets. Yeah, diets, and, yeah. And uh, mm. yeah, I, I think that's, anyway, I'm fascinated. So Did a um, in there? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's good. So I'd love for you to share any sort of insights you've gained along the way, um, you know, as you've been learning authentic business met- mm. methods and, every people who are listening and and watching this are at different levels. And I think anything you want to share, I I bet will be a good review, good inspiration for for others. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, George. Yeah. I was actually thinking back about this just yesterday. I was wondering, you know, when I first kind of came across you online, I think it was mid 2019, I think. And I think the first course I signed up for was your online course creation course. (laughs) and um and I actually used that straight away I actually like created a few short sort of yoga courses put them on my website sold it to my students and I think I actually made like a thousand bucks that year just from those courses which was like oh okay it actually works <laughs> um but I haven't really sold that many since then but I haven't been promoting it and it's just sitting there um and yeah and then sort of joining you in Master Heart for a couple of years now and now in your other group ABC it's been there's been so many 
different things that have come from it. So for instance, one thing that I really have gotten a lot of value from is just um, meeting other like-minded people. I think that, because I'm, like I said, I live in sort of a semi-rural community and the social circle's not that big. So especially people who do things that I'm interested in. So just being able to connect with so many people um, with similar ideas, but even maybe not similar, but just hearing about what they're doing, which is something, things I've never even heard of before. And it's like, oh, wow, that's actually a thing. <laughs> you know, you can make money doing that. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, that's just been inspiring and really lovely. And I've really gotten, um, yeah, I, I just love those connections that I've made. But on a more business perspective, I mean, that's those connections have enabled me to be confident about, you know, doing my podcast, which I launched in 2021 as well. So that's that was a side project. Um, that's not a money-making venture whatsoever <laughs> at this point in time. Podcasts but, usually aren't. <laughs> no, yeah. but that, that's more just a hobby project. Um, but yeah, I, I thought about that for 12 months. And then we discussed it a couple of times in the coaching session, I think, or a Q&A session. And um, I think you were sort of having a rant at one point about it. <laughs> <laughs> but but I went and did it anyway and I'm just so glad I have and I'm proud of you yeah yeah thank you've you. gotten yeah. a lot of experience from that and met some uh where develop yeah. con connections with other wonderful mm. people yeah yeah and I got to interview you about soul gym as well so yeah it's just been a nice outlet as well because I'm not the kind of person that can have a conversation easily with people I, I'm a bit of an introvert I think at heart and I like asking, I like learning, like learner is one of my top strengths, my top strength in the Clifton strengths thing. And so an input as well is a close second. So just being able to chat to people about things that I find really interesting and want to know more about and learn about, I think I, that's just so valuable. Like it might not be making me money, but it's filling me up inside in other ways. Um, and then I think, you know, with the content creation, that's been something that, I've really benefited from your your teaching about consistency on that. And maybe I haven't always been every week consistent, but more often than not, I have been. And, you know, I started my YouTube channel back at the end of 2019. And, you know, now I've got over 150 videos on there. And I still, my subscriber numbers are still fairly low at 260. Um, but, you know, my most popular video has over 2000 views. Yeah. So it's, and it's, kind of a bit of a it's not my main topic video it's kind of like a side topic video yeah. about um how to use mouth tape so that's kind of interesting but you know it's it's all an exp like I said it's an experiment I'm just constantly mm. experimenting and enjoying that process and and this year I really want to focus more on stage two content which is what you discussed yes. the other day in a call yes. and yeah and I think I've actually finally maybe worked out how that works uh, because before I was posting yoga videos mm -hmm. mostly and it's like well how can I make a stage two content from a yoga video um, I mean I guess I could write a blog post about it um, you know and and talk about the poses that we did in the yoga in the video but I find that would take a lot of time yeah and effort to do and it's like I'm not a, well I may have a lot of time really soon but <laughs> you know at the time when I'm working full-time yeah. or part-time and right Yada, yada. It's not necessarily and the best way to use my time. Just to, for people who don't know what stage two content is, mm -hmm. do you want to say a bit about that? How, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to put you sure. on the spot, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, so stage one content is basically well, how I see it. It's sort of any content that you put out that you haven't put out before. It's, it's a new idea or a, a blog post, a video or something with, on a topic that, you know, you're just experimenting with. Um, and then what stage two, from my understanding, is that, you know, after a while, you just see how, how your stage one content is performing. And then from the ones that perform the, boat, the best, you know, get the most likes or get the most views or most watch time, um, and then sort of adapting them or editing them slightly or, you know, say a video to a carousel or a blog post to a video or something like that and just elaborating a bit more or condensing it a bit more and then putting it out there again and just refining it in some way yeah. um, and then sharing that with your audience would that exactly be, yeah uh, yeah totally like improve on what was liked most from stage one mm. take the best of stage one improve on it and then redistribute it even further and yeah. and and this is stage two is really what i feel makes 
makes our audience grow. I mean, it, it's um, because that's, that's the best stuff that gets seen by even more people. Whereas stage one is just like our, maybe our, our more, our, our, our best fans maybe see our stage yeah. one stuff or our more supportive, our, our most supportive connections or audience see the stage one. And then the stage two, we, we make more of an effort to get the, get the best of it out there. So I, I mean, I have an idea for your, for your stage uh, two, for your yoga videos. Okay. Yeah. Is, um, have you, have you ever edited? So take one of your best yoga videos. Have you ever edited part of it and shared it as a shorter video? No, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> oh, well, it, that's why I don't do it. <laughs> I, I, I do stage two in other ways. I, I, I usually yeah. work with stage two in terms of, uh, in terms of um, text to carousel um, mm. or improving a, improving a text. But, or, or, or I do stage two video by just re-recording a shorter version of it after mm. I listen again to my stage one, get the, get the gist of it, like, okay, and look at the comments to see what people like the most. I then kind of, I'm, ed- I'm lazy about editing. So I re-record mm. sh- in a shorter way and then redistribute that and people, and it tends to do really well. But yeah. um, with yoga, it's different because yoga, you are mm-hmm. just demonstrating things. And I, and I, 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 so the great thing about YouTube as an example is with YouTube, you can look at the retention charts or the engagement charts yeah. for when people watched, well, when people dropped off versus mm-hmm. when people kind of paid more attention and things like that. And I wonder if you could study the, one of the, where well, your best videos and look at the retention chart and go, ah, let me edit that portion of it that had yeah, the best retention. Yeah. You know, I mean, the other thing I've been looking at on my YouTube stats is, looking at the videos, the analytics and seeing which get the most percentage view. Yes. Like the percentage of the video, like 50%, 20%, 80%. Um, Yeah. And looking at which of those videos have the longest retention. Cause I think um, with yoga, that's, you know, and it's, it's hard to know because someone might just click on it and watch a minute and then stop it. That someone might finish it and watch it all. And then it's going to skew the stats a little bit, but yeah. Getting a, looking at that, haven't done much with that yet, but it's, I dip in there and I just have a look and I see, oh, okay, this shorter video, like the mouse tape video I mentioned, like that mm-hmm. gets, that's got quite a high retention rate. It's only like a two or three minute video, but it's right. most people almost watch it almost to the end or. Right. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. So. so like, I think there's some opportunity sounds like to study the retention graphs mm-hmm. and do something with it, either to edit a portion of it out or to. Um, basically make more videos like that, you know, that, yeah. uh, that where we learn something from retention, but anyway, I, that's mm. great. That's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, any, any other lesson or insight you want to share? Um, yeah, I think um, just experimenting with different ways of like, like I said before, I was mainly just doing yoga videos, but now I'm actually doing shorter videos where I'm talking about, you know, things like self-love or journaling or just, topics that come up um and I've been thinking about and then I just make a short either three or five minute video on and that's where I see the potential for more stage two content to come from like Mm -hmm. I was looking at a video um yeah something about self-love you know like top tips for self-love and I thought okay well I can I actually ran funnily enough I ran the transcript through chat GPT just to see what it came up with but I didn't end up, I kind of used a bit of it, but it kind of still felt like it was a computer talking. Um, yeah. So I've yeah. edited a bit, but I've got like probably about eight sentences or something or a couple of, and it could fit onto eight, eight to 10 carousel, you know, it could be a oh, carousel good. post. So yes. that's kind of my thing. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to turn that into a carousel post. And, yeah. and that leads to my next thing, which is kind of probably what you're going to ask next about the the goals. And now um, uh, before you get there, I'd be just for yeah. those who are just heard what you said and not really understanding what chat GPT yeah. is um, for, for everyone, you can look up, I have a video called um, easily turn a blog, easily turn a YouTube video into a blog post with chat GPT, just like it sounds, you can spell it like that, C-H-A-T, G-P-T, and watch it. It's like a nine-minute video, and it'll show you how to use this tool to just almost miraculously turn a YouTube video um, into a blog post, like it says. And even, mm-hmm. even as you as you massage your use of it, it could be it could become better about your voice. 
mm. you could become better rather than a rather than a yeah. sort of more generic voice but yes anyway so that's yeah. i'm excited to, yeah. to I mean, have I'm you kind continue of, trying i kind of like the idea of the chat gpt thing but i was also scares me really yeah that. yeah, <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I don't want to use it it is but I, just it curious. is it is it, it, that both are valid <laughs> feelings for sure about this yeah. so yes let's let's move on to the goals then yeah so so this I've been really wanting to, because last year I, I I joined your TLC and I hung around for maybe half of it and then I just fell off the wagon. Um, but there were some things from there that I really want to focus on doing this mm -hmm. year, especially this mm -hmm. quarter. And yeah. and that is the CCC, the con the capture categorized calendar process. <laughs> yes. Which mm -hmm. um, which I've I've set up. I'm using a Trello board for that at uh -huh. the moment. And yeah. And for those who calendar. don't know, you could I have a blog post about it. I have a YouTube video about it. You can just Google capture categorized calendar and you'll find that. But okay, yeah. so you're gonna use CCC more. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um and, and yeah and using that whole because I actually mapped out last week, you know, all the key tasks that I want to mm -hmm. get like you know, content creation, yeah. planning yoga classes, working on my podcast, that type of thing, and how many hours I think that would take each week mm -hmm. or each month. Um, and so I've yet to transfer that into my calendar, but that's going to happen over the next day or two. Excellent. And uh, so I want to be, so in this time, in a few months, I want to have some sort of structure in place where I'm using that calendar effectively for those yes. tasks. And so that I can then, you know, I've got set time to do that blog post. Or I've got set time to do that video or set time to write stage two content. Um, and then, yeah, and then hopefully also the start of day, end of day, weekly planning, monthly planning and review process, still working out which tool I want to use for that. Yeah, the way that's just like a word, doc, like a document um, or whether it's actually like a, um, I have been toying with a, subscribing it's like fifty dollars to subscribe to this online system mm. but yeah. i'm not too sure so yeah. i think it's more just setting the habit in place and yes. i want to have a have a tool that's going to i really want to do that today you know and that yes sort of, yeah, yes so Okay, that's great. Yeah. And for those who are hearing, these are different the different techniques in the joyful productivity course that I teach. And I love it. I think that is the foundation. Like if if you um and it's always worth revisiting, like our joyful productivity systems are always worth improving upon because it it tends life and, and work tends to kind of make it go more chaotic if we mm -hmm. if we leave it alone and then we yeah. like tighten it back up again and it kind of gets more chaotic and we tighten it back up. Uh, and as every time we tighten it back up, we're kind of integrating the newness of our thought mm. process and our life and our business and how we 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 uh, have evolved. So I'm glad you're doing that. So yeah, thanks. when we and, check and, in again and, next time, we yeah. will uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll ask you about that. Yeah, I just want to say to people watching as well as like the things that I'm talking about. It's taken me like two or three years to get to this point. So I like yeah. I yep. you know. Mm -hmm. If you're kind of the person that goes, I want to do this, I want to do that, I'm I'm like that as well. But it's just taken, it just takes time. And that's been the hardest thing, I think, for me to to get my head around is that it's slow. Um, yeah. it's a slow process. Like you can jump all in and but you're gonna probably burn out or fail. That's right. Well, <laughs> um, as any real growth that happens, it's it's a mm -hmm. more gradual process than we like. Yeah. Sometimes we have some big jumps, but usually when we have a a big jump of growth it's not usually not sustainable and we kind of fall mm, back to yeah. the original maybe we grew a little bit after we fall back down but it's like <laughs> so it's absolutely like when it, it took me years of course to also really integrate joyful productivity and authentic marketing all that stuff as well so mm. yeah yeah and one more thing just to jump sure on this, that i'm going to be increasing the price of my yoga classes at the end of february so february oh, okay. will mark the 10 years of that i've been teaching yoga in the barossa awesome. valley and yes. i've had my price rise gradually over that time but i think i'm due for an increase my rent just increased as well so i'm like there we I go to cover costs. So, yeah, yeah absolutely it makes, makes a lot of sense i mean that's that's uh yeah we, i think i you know there's a there's a phrase called cola right cost of living adjustment i don't know mm. if that's there in australia but u.s I've heard anyway, that before. Use, yeah. we, we use the term i mean that's usually when a job gives you a bit of a raise at least a little bit and, and also you know our our social security you know, system retirement system has cola adjustments as well mm. and it's like employers and the government has adjustments for this stuff for increase in our in what we're receiving 
why why aren't we solopreneurs and small business owners uh, respecting the cola increases in our mm. business on a yearly mm. basis you know i think that's very normal and and most of us don't do it uh consistently enough so there you go <laughs> um so are you going to do any online yoga classes uh well i mean i do all the classes i do at the moment are available online as well oh right 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 okay yes, but, yes. yeah Good. but not specifically I'm not, not specifically online classes yeah no I'm, okay i don't know i don't know if that's where my passion is yeah yeah so, okay okay yeah. okay good well good um looking forward to checking in with you again next time about yeah. the ccc and the calendar stuff and seeing what you're learning from that angle yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and i'm excited and, i'm excited about it it's it's, yeah. it's time yeah i think it is it's yeah really so, time <laughs> yeah it's time it's time well thank you so much leia for doing this and uh everyone who George. is watching can follow leia's progress in the links below and we'll mm -hmm. check in with with leia in a couple months then yeah thank you so much so, thank you